Day one of phase three. Now this is gonna be the isolation phase, so we're really isolating each muscle group. And today we're gonna to be starting with back. Now it's gonna be starting with supersets, or not starting uh, the workout with supersets, but it's gonna start utilizing supersets. So we're gonna start with pull-ups here. It's gonna be a straight set, but eventually we're gonna work into supersets. And it's really gonna involve a lot more energy. It's gonna up the volume, up the intensity. That way you're burning more calories per workout and you're involving more muscle as well. So. Get ready, because this one's going to be pretty intense. There we go. One set down on the pull-ups, three more on the way. Remember, grab a nice wide grip overhand. You're going to retract that scapula down and back as you go through the full motion. Try to bring the bar up below your chin, just along that clavicle level, right back down. Excellent indication of overall, excellent indication of overall body strength. Can't recommend this one enough, and you're ha if you're having problem with it, feel free to switch it out for seated lat pull downs. Yeah. Beautiful day for that back pump. We're in the land of the supersets, get ready. It's been building up to this moment. Phase three is when you're really starting to become buff. We believe in you. There is no great genius without just a touch of madness. You tell us, are we mad? Are we crazy? Are we? <laughs> okay, now I got too much madness. I'll calm down. I'll bring it down a notch. All right. All right, moving on to T-bar rows. This is the last exercise today before we move on to those supersets. So we're mentally preparing ourselves right now because once you go superset, there ain't no turning back. You got four sets on this one. Time to bust this son of a bitch out. Yeah. I'm gonna keep that spine straight. So bend over, push your hips back, kind of like you would in a deadlift. Get that nice rigid straight spine and you're gonna work on retraction of the scapula, but as you let it go, you want a little extra stretch in the lats, release the shoulders so that way it pulls it and coordinates it forward. Get a little bit of a stretch and then pull it and retract it back, get a good squeeze, and uh, that's when you really feel it. Not only in the lats, but also in the erector spinae too because it's having to stabilize that straight spine in that, in that bent over position. Uh, great exercise for that real big, thick mass in the middle of that back. Yeah. It's busy in here today. Busy for Metroflex at noon. It's loud. It's good though. Gives you that. The, the energy feels a little bit more different, you know, a little more intense. Like we got to kick it up a little bit. So that's exactly what we plan on doing. It's perfect timing too with the beginning of phase three. All right. So we're moving on to the first superset of the workout here, which is going to be pen lay rows, supersetted right on to the dumbbell cross bench pullover. As you can see, we don't have a bench, we just have a stepping stool here, which is gonna be just as good. You want enough, you want enough height on here, so that way when you pull it over, it's not gonna bang into the ground. It's just enough where you get that full stretch, the lat stratus interior, a little bit in the rib cage area, the core. And uh, it's gonna be four sets of 10 reps each, so we're not gonna be pyramiding up and weighting this one. We're gonna just find a good weight for those 10 reps and just go right through it, boom, boom. There's gonna be no rest in between the pen lay row and the pullovers here. It's gonna go right one into the other and then you're gonna get about 60 to 90 second break in between that superset and, uh, and then start the process over again until we get those four sets. So with the pen lay row, you wanna get in a bent over position like you would a bent over 
barbell row, but in this one, you're not keeping that bent over position, meaning you're not gonna be holding that weight the whole time, contracting the, your lower back here, right, just spinae muscles. What you're gonna be doing is very quickly lifting it off the ground, hitting about that sternum area right there, just like so, keeping about a 45 degree angle with your elbow joint to your, uh, to your side there. And you're gonna be explosively lifting it up, and then you're not gonna be concentrating on the negative or the eccentric contraction, really just kind of dropping it down and hitting the ground. And what this is gonna do is build that explosive strength and a lot of power and strength in the upper back area. It's gonna have to generate a lot of that force and power, get it up to that position, hit the sternum, let it drop from there, you're gonna rep it out, 10 reps. So we're gonna start here. Phase three is weeks seven through nine. This is our third year into doing these 12 week plans and it's consistently been the same thing where every time we get into the third phase, that's when we really start to know the difference in our stamina, in our strength, in our size. So you've made it this far. Hopefully by the end of this phase three, that's gonna be week nine. You really start to see that in yourself as well. And uh, good luck, because you're doing damn good. You made it here going because this one's gonna be over before you know it then you're in that final stretch 9 through 12 baby then you are buff dudes approved yeah just giving the ground a little love tap fitting we're doing it right over the Aristotle quote a little madness going on over here This is madness. No, this is Buff Dude Land. <laughs> it's not very populated as you can tell. Actually it is today. That's, that's not good. That's, that's a bad thing to say because besides me and Brandon, it's full of Buff Dudes and girls. All getting it in. All putting in that road work. <sighs> This is ugly. <laughs> it's dirty. You still look pretty after doing this. You're doing something wrong. Doesn't mean you can't look pretty later, but you should, you should look pretty rough after this is over. But it's good. It's that feeling of accomplishment. Whew. So, moving on to the next superset, which is gonna be the rack poles. Superset it with the barbell shrugs. Now with the rack poles, what you want is get the rack, the bar, held just about knee slightly below. And what we're gonna do is essentially work in the upper half of a deadlift. So the rack pull, you know, the first half of the deadlift is gonna be a push. So when you bend over here, you're gonna be pushing with the legs. Once you achieve that, that vertical uh, calf muscle or vertical lower leg, that's when the pulling mechanism starts. So now since we're working back and wanna try to isolate a little bit more, what we're gonna be doing is working just in the pulling mechanism where you're just pulling it up to top position Keeping those lats real tight, bar close to your thighs here, just like so, up and down. It's a pretty easy movement, so we're gonna go a little bit heavier with this. We're gonna do four sets of eight reps. So we're not gonna pyramid up in weight necessarily unless we feel like this is a little too light or a little too heavy. So, and then after we get those eight reps done, we're immediately gonna go on to the shrugs, the barbell shrugs, isolating the traps. So, here we go. Here goes nothing.
All right, this is what will happen. Your grip might give out. Since you're trying to isolate the traps and not really do a forearm workout, although a forearm exercise or workout that you get in this is just a nice happy byproduct, what you want to do is just grab some straps. So that way your grip's not going to hold you back. And a lot of people, a lot of guys might say, you know, straps, ah, don't need them, weight belt, blah, 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 it's all just, you know, cheating or whatnot. It's not necessarily the case. You don't want to wear them all the time because then, of course, either your core might not have to engage as much as it normally does if you're wearing a belt all the time or your grip is not necessarily getting stronger because you're always using straps. Only really utilize those tools when you need it. It's kind of almost like a supplementation. You only use supplements to get you to that extra mile, to get you that extra bit. So we're gonna probably use straps on this one, that being said. You notice too on the, on the rack pulls, yes, you are pulling it, but there will be hip extension. So you wanna follow through those hips. Don't overextend, follow through, get a little squeeze in the glutes, keep the lats tight, and then bring it down slowly to the bottom position. Darkness imprisoning me, all that I see, absolute horror, I cannot live, I cannot die, trapping myself. Something, something, yeah. Hundred percent pure adrenaline. The ultimate rush. It's a real sequel to Point Break right here, baby. Yeah. All right, the supersets are over, at least for today anyways. We've got two exercises left. We're moving on to one arm dumbbell rows. Unilateral exercise and you know what the unilateral means. It means one side of the body, complete the reps, move on to the next side. Great for muscle imbalances, so learn it, live it, love it. You want to get in the habit of pulling through the shoulder. So you're attracting your shoulder and pulling the shoulder back as you're pulling it with your bicep and arm, getting the elbow up. But you want to make sure that shoulder's coming back too, because when you think about it, the connection of the lat muscles into the shoulder, not the bicep. So you're just doing arm rows here, just getting the elbow flexion is no longer really a compound movement. You want to make sure you get that shoulder involved. You get the full activation in the lat. Get the full stretch down and then activate it. You get that full range of motion. Elbow nice and high, contract, and then slowly let it down to the bottom position. Feels a lot easier, especially after those supersets. You can't imagine supersets is almost high intensity interval training. You get a lot, you got to bang for your buck and it gets you in and out of the gym quicker. You're getting the workout done fast, involving a lot of energy, burning those calories, getting your heart rate up and keeping your heart rate up. And you're not only using the ATP, which is a pathway a lot of power lifters will utilize. It's just, you know, that really short rep range, few reps, a lot of weight. You're also using the glycolytic pathway. You're burning up your glycogen, your sugars, your carbohydrates, you store in your muscles. So that's why a lot of times we'll introduce some higher sugars after the workout to replenish those stores because we're using a lot of them up especially in workouts like this so we'll have like some chocolate milk some protein in it directly after the after the workout protein synthesis is high get your sugars in it spikes your insulin and helps develop that muscle and make sure it's getting the proper nutrients to build it and build it up <laughs> feeling it this is the beginning of day this is the beginning of phase three day one and i'm feeling every ounce of it Every bit of sweat that's dripping off my body. <laughs> Speaking of Metallica. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, deep cut off the Black Album. Don't tread on me. Yeah. That's my message to these dumbbells right here. Don't tread on me, motherfucker. <laughs> ah. Did you think we were done with the shrugs? No, 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 not yet. Now we're moving on to one arm dumbbell shrugs. Unilateral, one more, you know what that means. So, as opposed to last time, with the barbell and on the second end, the tail end. It's so loud in here. Very sensitive ears. 
hidden beneath this big meaty buff dude is a sensitive soul. Okay, it's over, I'm good. Uh, yeah, so as opposed to the tail end of a superset with the barbell shrugs, we're fresh. So starting out with the dumbbells, and that's what we're ending this whole exercise routine for the day out with. So here we go, three sets. You got this, we got this. You know, feeling that a lot in your oblique too, because what's happening is your body has to counterbalance because you're holding a lot of heavy weight in either the right or left. So the body has to contract the obliques to help stabilize that spine and keep that vertical position. So keep that core tight when you're doing it. You don't want to bend over too much and get a lateral herniation or anything like that. So make sure it's really tight and just elevate the scapula and then slowly let it down to the bottom position. Keep that nice smooth motion out, that good tempo. There we go. It calls for a little celebratory head banging. Remember that thing about madness? Fuck yeah. That's what made it through this workout. All right, you don't gotta go that far. Just do it. That's the important part. That wraps up the day. Any final thoughts? I'm getting the frame here. <laughs> I just was watching the sweat, you know, you gotta watch it. It flew everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everyone in the gym hates my ass. <laughs> We're only here for two more weeks. They can handle it. Workout done. Hopefully uh, everyone enjoyed it. We did, now that it's over at least. No, it felt good. Got a good pump, got some blood flowing, got the heart rate up, burned a lot of calories, like we've been saying. And uh, yeah, ready for day two, phase three. Hell yeah. And until next time, stay buff.